In this video, we are going to work on a problem involving force and motion. Here is the problem. A car is traveling at a constant speed. Then, driver slams on brake. After sliding a distance, the car is stopped. In this case, we need to determine the sliding distance if the car is traveling up to a 10 degree slope. The coefficients of kinetic and static friction are given. I have several questions for you to make the key points clear. You can pause the video and do the question. Let's do the first one. This is the correct answer. The direction of car's velocity is pointing up to the slope. Since the problem states that the car finally stops, the magnitude of car's velocity is decreasing, which means that the direction of the acceleration is opposite to the direction of velocity. OK, let's do the second one. They are gravitational force, friction, and normal force. There is definitely a gravitational force. Also, when the car is on the slope, there is an interaction between the car and the surface of the slope. So there is a normal force acting on the car. Since the surface is not smooth, then there should be friction. Let's do the next question. It's kinetic friction. Since the car is sliding on the slope, then it should be kinetic friction. Now let's do the last question. This is the correct answer. The gravitational force is vertical, pointing downward and the normal force is perpendicular to its contacting surface. And we know that the contacting surface is a 10 degree slope. So you should be able to figure out the direction of the normal force. We have discussed in the first question about the direction of car's velocity and it's pointing up to the slope. We know that the car is deaccelerating so the direction of the friction should opposite to the direction of the car's velocity. Now I'm going to draw a graph. So first we draw a slope, then a simple car. The car is traveling at a constant speed. Then we draw an arrow to show its traveling direction, indicate the numbers we have, like mass, speed, degree. Since the problem is asking for car's stopping distance, and the car is deaccelerating from its initial speed to zero, so it's not hard for us to find a formula involving acceleration, initial speed, and displacement, which is v final square minus v initial square equals 2 times acceleration times displacement. Since we have initial and final velocity, and we need to find the displacement. Then, before doing that, we need to find the acceleration. Clearly, we can find acceleration by using Newton's second law, F net equals ma. Since we already know the mass, then we need to find the net force, and that is possible. So we draw a free body diagram, gravitational force, vertical, normal force perpendicular to its contacting surface, and friction pointing down to the slope. When analyzing forces, we need to set a coordinate that may more forces lying on its axis. This will also simplify the motion to a one-dimensional problem. In this case, we set a coordinate like this that may normal force and friction lie on it. Next, we decompose the gravitational force. Here, let's call this W1, and here, let's call this W2. 
the magnitude of the gravitational force is m times g. Let's call this angle theta. Then w1 is mg times cosine theta, and w2 is mg times sine theta. If we draw a horizontal line here, and this is 10 degree, and let's call this angle a, b, and theta. And we can know that a equals 10 degree, since a plus b is 90 degree and b plus theta is 90 degree. Then we can say that a equals theta, and that also means theta equals 10. Now we can know the magnitude of w1 and w2. Since the car doesn't move on the direction perpendicular to the slope, then the net force in that direction is zero. That means the magnitude of normal force equals the magnitude of W1. Then we can calculate the friction. Friction is the normal force times coefficient of the static or kinetic. As we discussed before, this friction is a kinetic friction. So we use mu k and net force along the slope is friction plus W2. Now we can do the calculation. Newton's second law tells us that F equals ma, and we can write the magnitude of A equals the magnitude of net force divided by mass. And we can replace the magnitude of net force by the magnitude of friction and the magnitude of W2. The magnitude of friction can be substituted, and the magnitude of W2 also can be substituted. So we'll have the magnitude of normal force times mu k plus mg times sine theta divided by mass. And we can also substitute the normal force by w1. So we will have the magnitude of w1 times mu k plus mg sine theta divided by mass. We also know that the magnitude of w1 is mg cosine theta, so we write mg times cosine theta times mu k plus mg sine theta divided by mass, and we can get rid of the mass. It's g cosine theta times mu k plus g sine theta. We can rewrite this by g uh, cosine theta times mu k plus sine theta. We know that theta is 10, so we can use calculator to get sine theta, which is 0 0.17, and cosine theta, 0 0.98. Then we plug in the numbers, so g is 9.8 meters per second squared, and cosine theta, 0 0.98, times mu k, 0 0.8, plus 0 0.17. The result is 9.35 meters per second squared. Now we can use our kinematic equation to get the stopping distance. So we write v final square minus v initial square equals 2 times acceleration times displacement. We know that v final is 0 and v initial is 30 meters per second. As for the acceleration, the direction of acceleration is opposite to the direction of velocity. So we must use negative 9.35 meters per second squared times displacement. And we solve for the x, which is the square of 30 meters per second divided by 2 times 9.35. And the final answer is 48.12 meters.